Okay, so good day. Welcome once again to Financial Accounting in 14 for ACC 111. And I am your course coordinator, Jovi G. Kain. And we are now in the next ULO, which is ULOC, or Identify the Fundamental Concepts and Principles in Accounting. So fundamental concepts. Fundamental concepts are the following. Entity concept. So if we see entity concept, an accounting entity is an organization or a section of an organization that stands apart from other organizations and, indi and even individuals as a separate economic unit. So if we say entity concept, it means it has a separate economic unit. Kumbaga, the business is separate from the personal okay, transactions or personal uh, assets of the owner. Again, the business is separate from personal assets of the owner. Oh. So it has an entity concept. Another one is that a partnership and the uh, partners have different, uh, different or entity concept. The assets of the partnership are different or separate from the assets of the partners in the business. In corporation setting, same as well, corporation, the corporation itself has its own separate or juridical personality. So corporation has its own separate personality and the uh, shareholders or stockholders has their own separate even assets and their own liability. So separate yung business, separate yung sa personal. So going concern concept, it means that the business has indefinite life. So it means to say that the company is going concern or to continue operating for the next year. Okay? For the next succeeding year. So it means parang move on. Move on sa. Okay? So business has indefinite life. If uh, It means to have going concern concept. So the question here is how it is violated. So if you number one, it is violated if the business transactions and the personal transaction of the owner are one, okay? So it violates the fundamental concepts of entity concept. Kasi nga dapat separate yung personal saka separate yung pang business. Then sa going concern naman, it violates going concern concept if the company cannot continue in the next succeeding years, which is usually common here in the pandemic. Kasi nga, some businesses are closed. It's because they cannot continue going on the next succeeding years. Okay? The next one is periodicity or time period concept. So it means to say an entity's life can be meaningfully subdivided into equal time periods or reporting purposes. So it may be annually. So if we say annually, it is every year. Semi-annual every six months, quarterly, every three months, and monthly, which is every month. Then, stable monetary unit, it means to see the transaction must be measured and recorded only in one term or one denomination of the country. So here in the Philippines, the stable monetary unit is the Philippine peso. The next one is the valuation. So like here, for example, for number three, if the company does not issue annual financial statements, so kumbaga, ang company mag issue lang ng financial statements if the company is blooming, not annually, kung kailan lang yung gusto, it violates periodicity or time period concept. Stable monetary unit naman is that transactions in the uh, financial statements 
or even amounts are presented in different denominations. Kasi iba yung value ng dollar tsaka iba yung val- value ng Philippine peso. So dapat meron siyang one stable monetary unit. Okay? The next one is the criteria for generally accepted accounting principles. So if we say GAAP, GAAP stands for generally accepted accounting principles. So set of guidelines and procedures that constitute acceptable accounting practices. So this is based on experience by the standard making bodies. And the uh, we do have here three principles to consider. The first one is the principle has relevance. So relevance is to the extent that if the result in information that is meaningful and useful to those who need to know something about a certain organization. So relevance is usually connected with timeliness. So information must be timely in order to be meaningful and useful to the uh, decision makers. Kasi nga pag hindi sa timely, maga para siyang yung ulam, okay, paka parang yung kanin na panis na. Wala na siyang importance. Wala na siyang value. Wala na siyang meaning. Okay? So it must be relevant Okay, the information must be relevant, meaningful, and useful to decision makers. The next one is the principle has objectivity to the extent that resulting information is not influenced by personal bias or judgment of those who furnish it. So, kumbaga, information must be free from personal intention or biases. Baka Yung information provided, it may be they have information like, for example, the company is making them or having a good uh, financial statement where in fact, hindi pala siya or the company is actually losing. Okay, kumbaga, ginagawa nilang profit yung company to attract investors. But then, hindi pala siya profitable but losing pala siya. It's because they tend to make the financial statement more attracted, attract, uh, more attracted nga siya, pero hindi pala siya in reality. So what, what will be the information provided by the decision makers? So mali na yung information na binigay nila sa uh, decision makers and then the decision maker will give also a wrong decisions. Then a principle has feasibility to the extent that it can be implemented without undue complexity or cost. Maga yung cost-benefit principle. The benefit must outweigh its cost. Maga yung cost of the information must be lesser or kumbaga yung benefit of providing the information must be greater than the cost of providing the information. Basic principles. The first one is objectivity principle saying again, uh, again and again, accounting records and statements are based on most reliable data. Okay, so they will be as accurate, as useful as possible. Kumbaga supported with appropriate receipts, supported with evidences, and not based on biases. Number two, historical costs. So if you say historical cost, principle states that acquired assets should be recorded at their actual cost, so at the date of purchase and not what the management thinks they are worth as of reporting date. So kung baga, kung magkano yung pag-purchase or pag-acquire ng asset, kung baga, magkano yung nasa resibo, that is the value of that asset, historical cost. Revenue recognition principle, which states that revenue is still recognized in the accounting period in which the goods are delivered or rendered or services are rendered or performed. So never mind the cash. Kumbaga, you are to recognize revenue pag yung goods 
are already delivered to customers. Or even nakaperform ka na ng service. Even wala pa yung money involved. The next one is expense recognition principle. So expense should be recognized in the accounting period in which goods or services are used up to produce revenue and not when the entity pays for the goods or services. So you are to recognize expense when it is incurred. So nangyari na talaga. Regardless kung kailan mo siya babayaran. So like for example, for electricity, for the month of January. So the electricity for January will then be uh, or the bill for January's electricity will then re be received on February pa. Okay? Pero that expense, so syempre, pag February pa yung bill, mababayaran mo sa pagka February. Pero, yung expense is related to January. So, dapat yung expense is a record mo sa January and not on February. That is expense recognition principle. Adequate disclosure. So, request that all relevant, okay, useful information that would be, that would affect the user's understanding, an assessment of the account entity be disclosed, okay, in the financial statements. So, all the information must be available for the users, especially information that are relevant or material in part with the decision maker. The next one is materiality. So materiality depends on size and nature uh, of an item judged in a particular circumstances of the omission. So kumbaga, materiality may depend upon the size it may be of the business or even the nature of the item. Yun nga, like for example, in terms of size, okay, 10 can of sardines by a sari-sari store, okay, loss is material. Pero, yung 10 cans of sardines na department store may not be material. Kasi nga, in terms of size, sari-sari store, is maliit lang siya, and then 10 cans of sardines, malaki na yung impact sa kanya. Na, 10 cans of sardines na na-loss. Pag sa uh, malaking ano, uh, supermarket, 10 cans of sardines na loss may not be material in part sa kanya kasi nga the size of the business is very huge. So that is in terms of size. The nature. Okay. If the nature of the loss, so yung loss pala is ninakaw ng employee, okay, so, disregard how many cans is that. So, disregard mo siya. Kasi nga, yung nature niya is ninakaw na ng employee. So, makoconsider na siya as material. So, sample lang yung nakita mo. Baka marami na siyang ninakaw. So, materiality, we depends upon the size and the nature of an item. The next one is consistency principle. So this relates to the standard or the accounting method. The firm should use the same accounting method from period to period to achieve comparability over time without a single enterprises. So however, changes are permitted, justifiable, and disclosed in the finances. So dapat daw, consistent, okay, yung pag apply mo na accounting standards or methods. So kung ano yung ginamit mo na accounting standard last year, must also be the accounting standard you used for this year. Hindi dapat pa iba, -iba. Dapat daw consistent. Pero it does not mean hindi na dapat mag-change. Okay lang daw mag-change. At as long as it is justifiable, and the information for that change or the reason for that change must be disclosed. Ilag ilagay mo talaga sa financial statement yung reason. 
for that change. So that is consistency principle. And thank you very much for listening. No? So, bye and God bless.